So how about the Cochrane database? Here's what the Cochrane database says. No experimental studies unequivocally demonstrate the effectiveness of AA, or this is 12-step facilitation, which means you go to a counselor and they get ready to explain how AA works to you, which kind of like catechism, I guess, or counseling when you're getting married. And this is done, whoops, this was written back at, in 2006. And why do they say this? They said this because they didn't care about the results of the studies that I'm going to show you. All they cared about was they wanted to make it a level one study. And if it wasn't a level one study, they just don't care. They throw everything else out. And that's what we're stuck with. So you need to realize when someone says, no one has ever shown that AA works, that's not true. But has it met the level necessary for the Cochrane database? The answer is probably not. OK. And the biggest study ever done for alcoholism is called Project Match. And what they wanted to do was match up a certain personality with a certain treatment. And that part failed. But they compared AA, cognitive behavioral therapy, and motivational enhancement therapy as outpatients after you got treatment for AA. And there was no control group because it wasn't felt to be ethical. And they've, people have come out and said that Project Match is invalid because there is no control group. And if you have a high level of statistical training, like maybe high school, you know that that is not true. Okay, so that's not a valid argument. And what they found was that Patients who were angry did better with motivational enhancement therapy. And anybody who's been to an AA meeting has seen people sitting in the back kind of steaming and stewing and, you know, sitting there grumbling. Those are the people who should be in motivational enhancement therapy. Otherwise, AA was as good or better than the other training groups. And they just published a study um, in 2013 looking at the same people 10 years later, and AA still did better. Okay, but again, since there's no control group, it wasn't randomized. They actually tried to match the best treatment for you. It's not acknowledged by the Cochrane database. <clears throat> now, anybody who has an interest, you can find this doctor's articles all over the internet, Leanne Cascudis, um, and it's in your handout. Dr. Cascudis is an avowed atheist, but she believes that AA, which is not a religious program anyway, is the most effective treatment for alcoholism. And let me just show you a couple of graphs that she uses to explain this. These are people who went to AA. These are people who didn't. And this is 12 months, that's 18 months. And this is how many were abstinent. So people who went to AA had about a 45 to 50 percent abstinence. People who didn't had about half that. And you can attack the study by saying, it wasn't randomized. You didn't force them to go to AA or prohibit them from going to AA. And that's true. But this over and over again is what you're going to see that people who went to AA do better. Here are people who went to no meetings for three months, less than 20 minutes over three meetings over three months, less than 50 and more than 50. So these are people who are going to a couple of meetings or three or four meetings a week. And look at the percent abstinent. 60% compared to 20%. So people who don't go to AA meetings, and this was measured over a three month period, have a much less chance of being free from relapse than people who go. Again, you can attack this because you can say, well, this doesn't mean anything. These were the people who were ready to quit drinking, so they just went to AA because the cult told them to go to AA. Okay. And here are people who um, never went to meetings, went to less than one a week, or went to meetings weekly or more. Same thing. Look at the difference in abstinence if you went to meetings at least once a week or more. And this is a confusing one, but what it says is if you look at no treatment, outpatient, and AA, and you combine them all together, the people who went to AA did better. And this is over and over and over again. So these studies tend to outweigh the fact that they're not randomized. They're never going to be randomized. If I tell her she can go to AA and she can't go to AA, they're simply not going to do it. Okay? And it'd be disruptive to AA, and we wouldn't put up with it anyway. So 